Back in the garage today. In the garage. Back in the garage. Back in the garage today. What's going on guys? Back in the garage today. Getting ready to do an upgrade to my 2021 KTM 890 Adventure R. The process is going to be the same for the other 890 Adventure, 790 Adventure, and Adventure R. And I believe the Norden 901, but if it's much different, I'll make a separate video because we're going to be putting an Enduro Engineering skid plate on Pete's Norden as well. Part of the reason uh, I've decided to do this, the stock skid plate's probably fine for most light duty applications off-road, but I've gotten in a few situations lately where I would have liked to have had a little more protection. I've used Enduro Engineering products on my race bikes, Noah's race bikes. They've always been great quality. The price point's good. It's a little over $200. I think it's $220, something like that, retail. I got mine quite a bit less because a buddy of mine's an authorized uh, Enduro Engineering dealer. And the other thing I like about it is supposedly, and we'll find out when we put it on, you can change the oil now without having to remove the skid plate. So I'm going to show you what the skid plate looks like, some of the little upgrades and stuff to it, show you how to install it. I'll give you my initial impressions. And then this upcoming weekend, I get to go test it out. So we may have a follow-up video if you guys want it on how well it performs and how well it's holding up, those sorts of things. So uh, let me show you the skid plate and then we'll get to work. Okay, so this is a look at the stock skid plate that comes on the bike. It's not very thick. It's a little bit thicker than a Coke can. We also have no coverage up here protecting the exhaust manifold coming off the bike. So now let me show you the Enduro Engineering skid plate. As you can tell, looking at this, quite a bit beefier. It probably will add some weight. We'll get some weight measurements here before this video is over, but solid. So, um, Let's get this stock one off, and then I'll show you everything that comes in the package with the new one, uh, all the mounting hardware instructions, and we'll get to work on putting it on. The other thing I want to point out real quick, where on the stock one we had no added protection up here, you can see they have an added piece up here, which should provide us some more protection on the exhaust, but we'll find out when we get it on the bike. There is a vent tube down here on the right-hand side of the bike on a little plastic connector. We just want to slide this vent tube off, and then we'll go to uh, removing some fasteners. Now the good news is to remove the stock skid plate doesn't take very long, doesn't take many tools. You need an 8 millimeter socket or T-handle if you can fit it in there and you've got one, two, three, four fasteners we need to remove up front. Now, down here on the bottom of the bike, which is always a little tough to see, but kind of in line with your kickstand, there are two additional eight millimeter fasteners. These are really short ones. We'll get these removed. And now with those six fasteners removed, you could remove, there is one down here, but you don't really need to. There's a kind of a rubber bushing that sits in there. Just pull down on both sides. And then the last thing I forgot to do was disconnect this hose over here on the right hand side. I'll get you a close up of that from a previous video I made. Now this is what the whole setup looks like removed. Do not throw this away because we are going to reuse some of this hardware on here. The one thing I would recommend doing, since you have this off, go ahead and do a little cleaning up. Uh, we paid a lot for these bikes, so we might as well keep them in as good a shape as possible. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and cut open the packaging here. We're going to grab our hardware package here, and inside of there, I believe, Enduro Engineering actually included some written instructions. They did. We've actually got some decent ones here in color. Uh, I'm going to read over these here real quick, and then we're going to get to work. All right, so if you're following along with the Enduro engineering instructions, you'll notice I'm going out of order. One, doesn't really matter. Two, I want to be able to put my entire new unit together so I can show you guys what the weight difference is between the stock and the Enduro engineering. So in order to do that, I got to go ahead and get my new skid plate put together as if it's going on the bike. So we're going to take a T30 Torx bit and we are going to remove the stock tank protectors because they will be reused on each one you've got three bolts you've got two up front you've got one in the back we're going to go ahead and get those spun out and then we're going to steal a little bit of more stuff off of the stock skid plate now once you get the first two bolts off that you just saw me remove you're going to need a 10 millimeter on the back side of this in order to get the third one off 
and we're going to do this on both sides. Sticking with the stock skid plate, we're also going to steal off the factory little rubber bumper bushing. In order to do that, simply just flip it over and you can use a T30 Torx if you want or you can use an 8mm socket and we're going to remove these three fasteners. Now with all this stuff removed, you can throw this away if you want, but I would just recommend holding on to it in case you ever want to put it back to factory for whatever reason. Also, you might want to clean it up before you put it away. Okay, so now we're back over here on the stock skid plate. Off camera, I went ahead and took this little bumper bracket and cleaned it up. You can see how the holes align. Now this is obviously much thicker with some reinforcement. So they've included some additional hardware. You want to grab the bolts with the four millimeter Allen. You're going to set this down on here. We're going to flip this over and then we're going to get these fasteners threaded in to affix this to your new Enduro engineering skid plate. Now one thing I didn't show but I did decide to do off camera is just take some uh, blue Loctite medium weight and that's what it should look like with the, uh, the stock bumpers installed on the new skid plate. Alright so I kind of want to show you guys a little trick here because in the instructions and we're getting ready to put the tank guards on next it says to use the M6 by 25. Now if you can't just eyeball them and you don't want to guess that's where a pair of these come in really handy. And you can just set this on here and you can see that this is the bolt we need to use. So we're going to need a few of these and I'll show you what to do with them. Now off camera I went ahead and cleaned up this engine guard. You especially want to clean up this rubber bushing piece here because if it gets dirty it's, go it's going to rub the uh, tank. It's going to make it a little more difficult to remove. So we're just going to line this up here and then we're going to take our two 25 millimeter length bolts, run those in. You can use a Torx 30 on there, or in my case, I'm just going to use an 8mm socket. Okay, at this point you can see we've got the tank guards on. However, I only have the upper two bolts installed on both sides. I'm going to get a weight on this and uh, throw the additional hardware on there too for comparison. And then we'll actually get to installing this. On both sides here, underneath the foot peg, there is a T45 Torx bolt that we need to remove. Okay, so what we're going to do with that bolt removed, I did have to loosen up the other T45 here. Didn't have to take it out. You can see there's a spacer in here. We're going to pop this spacer out. We're not actually going to be reusing it. We're going to use one of the spacers included in the kit. Now using the spacer included in the kit, you see the orientation. You want them on both sides facing out like this. So we're going to try to get this in here. There we go. And all we want to do is get it lined up and then take our Torx 45 bolt we just took out, put it back in, get the thread started, but do not tighten it down. Okay, we got that in there. I'm going to go ahead and tighten this other one back down up front here that I loosened up. And then we're going to move over to the right hand side of the bike and do the same thing over there. All right, so over here on the right hand side of the bike, same deal. We're going to get this T45 bolt removed. And we're going to see, it's in there a little tight, probably go ahead and loosen up the T45 in front of it here. There you go. Quarter turn drops right out. Same thing on this side, just kind of shove it in there, take your bolt, and then once again, just get, just get it, the thread started, and then you should be good. All right, so I'm not really going to attempt to film this next part because it's going to be difficult to see, but you're going to grab your M6 by 16 millimeter bolts. You got four of those included in your kit. Once again, you can use that trick I showed you if you're not sure which ones they are. Then you're going to look at these four holes in the back bottom of your skid plate. We're going to line those up and then we're going to thread these bolts in to these bracket slash spacers we just put in. Don't tighten anything down yet. Just get them started with a few threads and then I'll show you the next part. Okay, you can probably see I got the four bolts in. Actually, it was pretty easy to line up. Now, there's two others that are kind of in line with your kickstand, just like the originals we took out on the stock skid plate. These are a little bit longer. These are 12 millimeter. 
versus these little shorties we took out on the stock. So grab these two, same sort of deal. We're gonna get them started here. We're not gonna tighten anything down yet till we get everything aligned though. I will just say, in helping to hold this in place by putting these tank guards back on because they have those rubber grommets, if you snap those up, I literally only have those four back bolts still in. I haven't put the other ones in and they're in loose and you can see it's just holding there in place, which will help you get those two bottom bolts in. All right, so <clears throat> this is a little strange here. We're gonna take this L bracket and we're gonna grab our, uh, our 20 millimeter in length bolt and we're gonna thread this in to this uh, fastener that's built into the skid plate. And I'll kind of show you how this is gonna work. So this is gonna bend around then, once we have this tightened down, and then this will give us a mounting point for the bottom part of the tank guard on here, which we'll get to in a minute. Okay, so we're obviously up here on the front of the skid plate. We're gonna grab our last four 16 millimeter bolts. We're gonna get this lined up on here and we're gonna start getting these back into the stock position. So you got one, two, three, and four. And now with these four started, we can finally start tightening things down. So go ahead and tighten down all four fasteners. Now while we're up here, just something I'd like to point out. You remember on the factory one, this whole piece was cut out, exposing our exhaust manifold. It's now covered up. Now, you can tell this is a separate piece, so if for some reason you don't want it on there, you can remove it by pulling out these four four millimeter Allens, but uh, I like the added protection. Now we're gonna work our way back down to the bottom of the bike, tighten up those two smaller 12 millimeter in length bolts, and then the other four on the brackets we installed earlier, get everything tightened up, and then we got a few more things to do, and then we'll be done. Okay, so just to recap, on both sides of the bike, we tightened up these two back here on these new bracket slash spacers we put on. We also tightened up the two bolts underneath. Now we want to grab our T45 bit and tighten this big bolt back down. I'll put a Torx back up on screen, but if I'm being honest, I'm just going to tighten it up. And then if you had to loosen any other ones in order to give you the clearance, be sure to tighten those up as well. All right, now we need to get this L-shaped bracket and the bottom of our tank guard back on. We're gonna use the included four millimeter Allen or hex head, whatever you wanna call it, it's 20 millimeters in length. We're gonna run this up through this L-shaped bracket here. And then we're gonna take the included nut that's gonna go on the back here we're gonna thread into. We're gonna need a 10 millimeter wrench and then we're just gonna tighten this down and then we'll tighten this down. Keep in mind it is just plastic, you don't want to over tighten it. And then in our case, since we have one here, we're just going to take our 8 mil T-handle, tighten it down into the skid plate. I think we're good. So back over here on the right hand side of the bike, make sure you got your drain hose hooked back up. And then we're going to take the included 4 millimeter Allen with the hex head on it. And we're going to line this up through right here, if we can get it bent around. Skid plate is now installed. We are done. Now some of you may be looking at this going, Mario, what the hell? At the beginning of the video, you said I would be able to change my oil without having to take the skid plate off. There's no way I can get my oil filter out. Oh, but you can. So while you don't have to take the skid plate off, you've got one fastener back here and then two up front that we removed earlier that if you take this left side engine guard off you can now access your oil filter you can also get to the two drain plugs here and I'm gonna guess they're gonna clear because they said they would but for the oil to drain out they put these two cutouts in down here so I haven't tested it out yet but that is one of the reasons I wanted this skid plate because it was kind of a pain in the butt to take off the stock one and most of the other aftermarket ones available still require you to remove the skid plate to change the oil. So we'll test it out, let you know how it goes, but that's how it works. Three bolts, you can change your oil. All right guys, so that's how you install one of those Enduro Engineering skid plates on a KTM 790, 890 Adventure Bike, also Norden 901. I want to hit you with a few stats though before we close. 
It is heavier than the stock skid plate. It's 69% heavier. I'll put the actual weights up on there, but keep in mind uh, something. You also have that additional protection in front of the, the uh, exhaust manifold, which we didn't have before. If you took that off, obviously it wouldn't be quite a 69% increase, but I like the added protection. That being said, it's 133% thicker than the stock skid plate. So, you know, you do the math on that, it adds up about right and you have additional protection. So just some things to be aware of. It's gonna add probably a little less than four pounds. I don't know, the math was up on the screen than what you were in a stock setup, but you get the added protection. So I also like the convenience of being able to change the oil without having to take it off the bike. And all of your stock stuff, I would recommend sticking that in a Ziploc bag, writing down what it is in case you ever want to return it to stock. You've got all your fastener spacers, all those sorts of things. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, considering that subscribe button, because if you like motorcycles, well, this is the place to be. If you have any questions about the installation process, let me know down in the comment section below. I will say the fit and finish top notch. I didn't have to fiddle around with that thing at all. If you want to know how this thing works long term, well, I'm testing it out next weekend. We'll see how it does. And then over the next several months, maybe I'll end up making some sort of review video on it. And when we got to do an oil change, we'll see if that works without having to remove it. And as always, I'll talk to you again soon.